What up everybody, Instructor Beats back again here with our third grade mastery check. Let's uncover our questions today. So the reason we're doing these mastery checks is because of this quote right here, right? It's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. We want you to take these mastery checks to self-check to see, okay, have I mastered what I've been taught or do I need to continue to learn from my failure? And that's the goal from today. Celebrate if you get them all right. If you get one wrong, go back, rewatch the video, listen to our area song, ask somebody to help you do something to learn from your failure. If you want to solve these on a piece of paper, you can find a paper copy of our mastery check in the description for this video. If you do not have a printer or you don't have something where you can write on your computer, you can just get a piece of paper, pause the video as we introduce a question, and then push play to check your work. So as you know, we like to go from the easiest to the most challenging. So this is going to be the bottom level question. Number one, it says, what is the area of the figure? Because I'm trying to find my area, I'm not, I know I'm looking for how many square units cover the surface of my rectangle. So there's two different ways to do it. You could just count the unit squares, but because there's a lot, I'm just going to use my area formula. I know that my width is three units and my length is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 units. So my area formula, which is length times width, is going to be 12 groups of three. And my area for this rectangle is going to be 36 square units. Remember, you gotta label your area with square units because you're covering them like an array. If you got this one wrong, we encourage you to go back and look at our lesson about what area is. Start back at the beginning and learn from your failure. Let's take a look at number two. Number two says, Toby has a square room covered with wood flooring. One side is seven feet long. What is the area of the room? And that should be a question mark right there. So this is a word problem. So as you know here at uh, Instructor Beats, we love our sides check strategy. So my statement's going to say the area of the room is blank. And then I know because it's talking about area and my units were feet is gonna be blank square feet. When I go back and identify now, I'm identifying that this is a square and one of the sides is seven feet long. So at first, maybe you're confused. He's like, wait a minute, to do my area formula, I need to have two dimensions. I need to have length and width. Well, because we've identified this as a square, we know that our length is gonna be seven and our width is also going to be seven. So when we plug those into our formula, we, if we were covering this with square feet, we would have seven groups of seven, which would make our area 49 square feet. If you did not get this one correct, we encourage you to go back and look at our lesson about using our area formula for rectangles not covered in unit squares. If you got this one correct, let's go to our most challenging question. Question number three says, what area equation will help you find the total area of both the purple and the white tiles? So question number three is supposed to be a challenge level question. You have to take the skills that we learned and our knowledge about area and apply them in a more challenging way. This rectangle reminds me of my distributive property. Matter of fact, they have decomposed my width into three units in two units. So to solve for this area, if I was using my distributive property, I would have three groups of seven that tell me the area of the white section but then parentheses, even though order of operations tells me it doesn't ha I don't have to, just makes it easier to differentiate. Then I have two groups of seven here, and I could figure out that this is 21, that's 14, add them together to find my total area of 35. But these equations are not written in distributive property format, which is what I call this. So what they want us to do is know, okay, so if I wanna find the total area, of both the purple and white tiles, I could compose this length into five units, and then my area formula would be five groups of seven, which matches C. So my answer for this one would have to be C. Instead of using my distributive property, I combined those and then used my length and my width. We really appreciate you checking out this mastery check. If you're using this to help you study, we encourage you to go back and watch some of the lessons, especially if you missed a question, go back and find the lesson that's gonna help you understand 
your failure so you can learn from it. You could also check out our Aryan Perimeter song to help you with a catchy way to remember the concepts that you learned about in this unit. As always, we appreciate you. Thank you for checking us out. Please like and subscribe. Instructor Beats, out.